Hi everyone, I hope all of you are doing well. So today I am going to teach you how to read any book effectively. It can be a UPSC book like this one, Ancient India or the Introduction to Indian Art. It can be a book that is in your syllabus for your college or for your school. Or it could be a big that you, book that you would like to read as a non-fiction book that you have just picked up from some bookshelf. These particular 8 steps are going to help you to really really figure out how to read any books effectively, how to read any books faster and how to understand them and retain them for a longer period of time. Now let's, that being said, let's directly jump into this particular class. So the first important tip or the first important step that you need to follow is that read and understand broadly the table of contents. So every book has a table of contents. Try to read the table of contents and try to just understand it from a very very simple or holistic or overall broad perspective. So for example here in this ancient India book of class 11th NCERT these chapters are given obviously there are many chapters in this book and if you just read the first four five chapters headings you will realize what this book is for. The importance of ancient history, the modern historians of ancient India, the types of sources and historical construction, the geographical setting. If you go quickly just go to the geographical setting chapter you will see they have given the map geographical setting you know so here they have given the map of physical map of India then they have given the rainfall map of India they have also given the copper iron ore and gold deposits in India map so that means they are going to talk about how India is located in the subcontinent and how it affects the history of India then the stone age, chalcolithic farming age then the Harappan culture the advent of the Aryans. So basically this chapter is chronologically this book is telling you about various events that happened in the ancient history of India and these are the things that you have to keep in mind overall uh, when you are studying this chapter that I will be studying about Indus Valley Civilization, Harappan Civilization, Aryans, I will be studying about the Vedic phase, the Jains and the Buddhists, uh, various invasions by Iranians and Macedonians. So these things overall create a mind map or just write them down in short form whenever you are going through this table of contents. Then apart from that the second thing you need to do is that you can compare these topics, these table of contents with the syllabus of your exam. So whatever the syllabus of the exam is given to you in or whatever UPSC syllabus you have in hand, just compare this particular table of contents with the syllabus to get even a better understanding because if you understand or remember these topics then you will be able to sort out through a lot of questions that come in the exam all right and you will be able to retain also that information better so read and understand broadly the table of contents first second look and compare with the syllabus of your exam if there is no syllabus of course you just kind of try to remember these table of contents don't try to memorize them just just kind of imprint them in your mind or just try to just place them in your mind consciously so that you are able to remember them. Then the third and the most important thing to do is Google the chapter heading and look at the wiki page or skim through this wiki page quickly and also look at the some of the Google images. So here like if I Google uh, Harappan civilization or Harappan culture I will get the page of wiki to Indus Valley civilization. What you should do is just quickly look at okay uh, this is the map okay here was the Indus Valley civilization Pakistan and Northwest India and it was a bronze age civilization in the northwestern regions of South Asia lasting from this year to this year and its mature age from this year to each this year and together with ancient Egypt Mesopotamia it was one of the three early civilization of Near East and South Asia and of the three the most widespread its site spanning an area stretching from today's northeast Afghanistan through much of Pakistan into western and northwestern India. So overall now you are getting an idea. Overall you are getting a very quick idea of what the Harappan culture was all about. It was basically civilization spread in these parts of the world and it was one of the most ancient civilizations, one of the early three civilizations and this is the time period and it was a bronze age civilization. So I could also quickly look at what is a Bronze Age Civilization. So it's a historic period be between this and this which was characterized by the use of bronze. So basically Bronze Age is nothing but an age in which bronze was widely used and this it was during that period only. 
so if you look at quickly these kind of things you will get a good idea now after that you could also look at the images so if if you go to the indus valley civilization google images page these are the image search results you will get you will get you know okay these are the kind of houses that they made right this is the expansion the area of where it was existing just give 5 minutes not more than that okay maybe there is some interesting page you can go to that particular link also and see okay look here they have visualized it more for you people used to live like this in the in this valley civilization maybe these are the so this kind of kind of creating mind maps is very important visualization in your mind is very important it will help you to recall it later much better way okay so now we have done these three steps <coughs> excuse me the fourth one is read the subheadings of the chapter after you have let's say i am reading the harappan culture page i'll go to page 53 which is the harappan culture page <coughs> don't read the chapter right now just go through the main chapter subheadings or headings that are given geographical extent so first the chapter is going to talk about the geographical extent of this particular civilization town planning and structure so this is very important i should remember town planning of this particular civilization of this particular chapter in history because this is important right that's why it is used as a subheading so subheadings are basically the important things that you need to know about it agriculture domestication of animals technology and craft trade political organization how it was there kaise the religious practices male deity in the indus valley civilization there was also a mother goddess so that picture is given here interesting so i also look through the pictures at the same time tree and animal worship harappan script seal of pashupati mohanjodaro weights and measures pottery seals images terracotta origin maturity and the end that that is the chapter about the end now the post urban phase of harappan culture what happened after the urban phase what happened after complete urbanization of the harappan culture so all these kind of subheadings you can even write them in a in your notes that these are the major topics of that particular chapter that i have to read so if you read these subheadings or headings of the chapter it really creates you gives you a kind of a mental image about what you are going to study and what are the important things you need to remember from the chapter and then just create a mental map or a written note of these main points that you have come across then the number 6 thing is look at the back of the chapter and the read the exercises first before reading the chapter abhi tak maine chapter padhna shuru nahi kara i have only read looked at the google images looked at google and looked at the wikipedia page i have looked at various subheadings now what i will will i do is i will read the exercise okay why is the harappan culture called a bronze age civilization of course because it was during the period when bronze age was going on and also because of the use of bronze so that probably the of course the answer of this particular question will be given in the chapter so when you read the chapter you will know what are the important things to read because these exercises often are the important things that you need to remember from the chapter describe the main occupations of the harappan people you should know the occupations i think this question also has come in upsc how were the harappan cities planned describe their distinctive features so you should know the distinctive features of the planning of the city mention the achievements of the harappan people in the field of technology and crafts so all the important things that you need to know from the chapter are given similarly so after that uh also look at the chapter images maps descriptions like i told you look at the images um, now this is not a good image so that's why i did the google image this is okay kind of an image you can look at it the citadel in harappa harappa plan of the city oh so this is the entire plan of the city you know these might be the walls western gateways and terraces so these are the walls so like this there was some plan of the city extent kahan pe phaila hua tha what are the main main sites just look at that and uh, try to remember these sites okay this is the great bath i'm now no this is not a great picture because this is a black and white edition but online you can online also you can google all these images and look at them and then finally the eighth step is that you come and read the chapter it will become i'm telling you if you do these points 1 to 7 and then read the chapter the chapter will become easier you will retain it more you will recall it more and also uh like i have said here above 1 to 7 should take only 20% of the time now let's say you have to spend 1 hour reading this chapter 
around 10 to 15 minutes you can spend on this particular exercise that I have told you in points 1 to 7. More than that you don't really need to do. Usse jada kuch karne ki koshish karoge to time waste hoga. Now similarly let's go to an introduction to Indian art. I will show you here also. What is the first step that I have to do? I have to read the table of contents. Okay, prehistoric rock paintings. Okay. Art, arts of Indus Valley. So in this book, what they are going to talk about? They are going to talk about the uh, prehistoric rock paintings, what rock paintings that were there in India before, before we have started recording the history. What is prehistoric? You can even Google that. What is prehistoric? You should know that. Because if in UPSC it comes and you are not able to understand that, just know the basic, very basic, it will take you 5 minutes in Arts of the Indus Valley. So Indus Valley Arts, Modern Period Arts, Post-Modern Trends, Mural Traditions, what is a mural? So you can go ahead and Google what is a mural and that will help you to really understand uh, some basic things about a mural. Because sometimes you need to know these basics and need to kind of uh, do well. So. Um, I have googled here what is a mural and if you see a mural is any piece of artwork piece of artwork painted or applied directly on a wall ceiling or permanent substrate usually usually a vertical one that is to say basically any painting on a wall or on a ceiling is known as a mural so in India there was a um, period when murals were developed so it is important to know that then temple architecture this is very important, right? Because every year questions are coming from this Indian bronze sculpture, Indo-Islamic architecture. So this is the main things I will be reading. The second thing I need to understand is go ahead and compare this with the syllabus. If these are chapters, topics are given in the syllabus, even they are not given in the syllabus. Sometimes you know that questions have been asked from this. So of course you should prepare them. But if they are given in the syllabus, then you will get some idea. Then go ahead and Google, Google some of these topics, you know, you can go ahead and Google prehistoric rock paintings, arts of Indus Valley. If you Google them, you will get a nice idea about these topics and you can look at the images also. Then you should read the subheadings of the chapter. Now I think in this particular book, the subheadings are not given because it is in a more paragraph sort of a format, but pictures are there. So you can go ahead and look at the pictures. You can look at the, so there are subheadings. So you can look, go, go ahead and look at the subheadings, but there are fewer than other books. There are a few subheadings. Look at these kind of indexes they have. They have these chapters, uh, indexes in which they have given a part, they have taken a particular piece of architecture and they have given more information about that. So you could read this even first before reading the book. Then uh, create this kind of mental maps or written notes about what you're going to read. Look at the chapter exercises. What are the chapter exercises are given at the back of the chapter? You should also look at that. So here in this book, in this chapter, I think, um, I don't think they have end of the chapter exercise. They have exercise. See these short exercise. What are the main features of Badami cave paintings? Right. And also, so this is very simple, but at least you know that Badami cave paintings are important. So you will remember to remember the Badami cave paintings. Look at chapter images, etc. all these, and then spend only 20% of time doing that and then go ahead and read the chapter. All right. So this is a foolproof way of reading any book. If you have any doubts, let me know. If you have any techniques, let me know what techniques you use to particularly read that book <clears throat> or any book because that will help me also. And apart from that, I would also like to say why am I doing these kind of uh, classes or videos is because I think a lot of times students focus only on what to read. That I have to read this book, Mirko Ancient India, Padni hai, NCIT, Padni hai, Ramesh Singh, Padni hai, ye padna hai. but they never focus on how. So how pe jada focus karo because that will really help you for the exam and for the longer term. That's my advice. Take care. Bye-bye.